Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use Screen Copy 2.0. Now, if you're not familiar with screen copy, it's been on the market for a while, and basically this allows us to mirror and control our Android device on our Windows PC, Linux, or even Mac OS. Plus, we have the ability to record, and when we're recording from our PC, we're not using any of our Android device's CPU or GPU power, and this comes in really handy for recording gameplay or even just screen casting. Let's say you needed to have a bigger display for, uh, let's say, a presentation or something like that. This would work out really, really well. Screen copy has been on the market for a little while, but with 2.0, this is one of the biggest updates because we now have official audio support. In the past, we had to use a secondary app to get audio working, but now we have crystal clear video and audio with screen copy, and it's actually really easy to set up. Now, one of my favorite things to do with screen copy is actually game on a bigger display with a phone that doesn't support it. What I've got here is the Pixel 6a. It doesn't support HDMI over USB Type-C, but we can actually connect this to a laptop or a desktop PC and use that display display as our Android device's display. This also works over Wi-Fi, but personally, I like using a USB connection. That way I have very minimal latency. And speaking of latency, it's only 35 to 70 milliseconds. Now, when recording, you can always just stare at your Android device's screen and record just like we are right now. By the way, I've got dead cells running and I'm using the built-in recorder right now. There is a GUI application that we can pair up along with this. and I'm gonna show you how to use all of this. But uh, right now, I've just recorded that little gameplay session. We'll go ahead and close everything down. And the recorded file is going to be right in the screen copy folder. And with this setup here, I actually get some really good quality recordings. I'm recording in an MP4 format, but they just added support with 2.0 for AV1 and H.265 formats. The new audio feature will work with any Android device that's running Android 11 or higher. And there's only one thing we really need to do to our device, and that's enable USB debugging. So from our Android settings, we're gonna to go to system and we're gonna find the build number. From here, we're gonna tap on this about five times. You're gonna get a little pop-up that tells you you're now a developer. On these Pixel phones from system at the very bottom here, we've now got developer options enabled. So we need to find USB debugging. From here, we need to make sure it's on. Choose okay. And now we can actually use screen copy, but we need to download the application. I'm going to show you how to set it up along with a very nice GUI that makes it really easy to use. All right, so now that we have USB debugging enabled on our Android device, it's time to get screen copy installed. As you can see, it's spelled S-C-R-C-P-Y, but it's pronounced screen copy right here over on the official GitHub, pronounced screen copy. This is version 2.0. They've added audio. Now, I personally use this over USB, but it can also be used over Wi-Fi if you wanted to. You're going to get more latency over Wi-Fi. Remember, it's kind of just like casting to a device. Over USB, very, very minimal latency, and that's really why I like this application. I'm on a Windows 10 machine right now, but it also works for Windows 11, Mac OS, and Linux. Go ahead and read through this. Everything you need to know is here. And we're going to download the latest version right over here in the releases. In itself, screen copy is totally usable like it is, but uh, we can download another application that gives us a really nice GUI. I'm going to grab the 64-bit version. You could also use the 32-bit version if you wanted to. We're gonna download this, it's a zip file. Next thing we're gonna do is download a really nice GUI. That way it's a lot easier to use for a lot of people. Now you don't have to use this if you don't want to, but it comes in really handy. This is known as GUI screen copy, and it doesn't come with screen copy, so we did have to download that first part, and we got 2.0 there. Again, just like screen copy, lots of great information over here. Go ahead and read through it. We're gonna download the latest release. And for this, I'm going to go with the PYQT5 X64 version for my Windows machine. So we've got both of them downloaded. Now we need to extract screen copy. I'm going to go ahead and do it right here. Screen copy Win64 version 2.0. This is the folder we want. I'm actually just going to place it on my desktop. This can be anywhere, but I want easy access to it. And before we mess around with the GUI, I just want to show you the way this works, but I'm also going to put this on my desktop for easy access. Inside of the screen copy folder we just extracted, got a lot of files. If you've never run ADB on your PC before, we're going to run the first one here, adb.exe. Nothing's going to happen. It's totally fine. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and plug our Android device in. 
Remember, USB debugging needs to be enabled. Showed you how to do it from developer options. And the first time we plug this in, we're gonna get a pop-up, allow USB debugging. You can choose allow, this will only do it one time, or we can use the check mark here to allow from this device every time we connect it. That way we won't get this pop-up anymore. And now we can start up the screencopy.exe. And there we have it. We're now mirroring our device directly to our PC. Now there are settings that we can actually use inside of screen copy. If you don't mind using terminal commands, open a terminal here, and we can actually type out our commands right here. And if you head over to the screen copy GitHub, its features include audio forwarding with Android 11 and above, recording, if we choose this, this will give us the command we need to go ahead and record. And this also supports MP4 and AV1 formats. You can change that pretty easily with that uh, terminal that we opened up. But I know a lot of people don't want to type this in, so that's why we downloaded the GUI for it. It's actually made by another app developer, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. We're going to close this down. We've got the GUI screen copy right here, and we've also got the screen copy folder where we extracted everything. What we're going to do is drag this right over here in the folder. Now we're going to launch GUI screen copy. This window is going to appear. The screen copy server could not be found. So what we need to do here is choose the screen copy server, screen copy server, and there it is. So this is actually really awesome. And like I mentioned, it comes in really handy. Now my device is still connected to my PC. I can see it right here. We've got the bit rate that we can actually adjust. I'm going to go all the way up. I think it's uh, 16,000. Oh, we're right there. On, there we go. Default resolution, or we can change the resolution right here. And in order to start this, just to kind of mirror the phone itself, start screen copy. There we go. We can actually use our mouse to control our phone from here. But with GUI screen copy, we've actually got some buttons here. We can drag this around wherever we want it. So we've got our home button. If I was to bring this up, bring us right back home. So you can actually control the phone itself with your mouse and keyboard. In order to record your phone screen, right here, record And as soon as screen, we start screen copy, it's automatically going to start recording our Android device's screen. That file is going to be located right here. So I'm just going to go do it real quick. We'll go start. This bar can be moved out of the way. So you can play your games and record right here. Shouldn't be a big issue, but I kind of just wanted to show you here. Now that we're done, we'll go ahead and close this down. And that recording is located right here in our screen copy folder. We can play it right here. So yeah, easy to record your phone's display. And this way, we're not using any of our phone's CPU or GPU power. All of the screen recording is now handled by our PC's CPU. That way, we're not taking a performance hit, and this will help out with gaming. If you've ever tried to record your screen and play something like Genshin Impact at the same time, you know it can be a bit laggy, but with this, we don't have to worry about it. Overall, I've been really excited about the release of Screen Copy 2.0 due to that audio pass through. We've now got audio here and it's really awesome to see this. On these lower end Android devices that don't support USB Type-C to HDMI, this is really great for recording the screen itself and especially gameplay. On higher end devices like the Samsung Galaxy S line, you can always do USB Type-C to HDMI to a screen capture device or something like that. But with the majority of the Android phones on the market right now, that's just not possible. But with this, it does make it really easy. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching and definitely hope you try it out. I'll leave links to everything we used in the description below. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. But like always, thanks for watching.